Who's glad to be in service one more time? Praise God. I know I am. Father, we just thank you for the privilege of being in service one more time. We thank you and praise you, Lord God, for the privilege of assembling here above ground. We thank you, Lord God, that we do not have to assemble in secret. We thank you, Lord God, for the, the privilege, Lord God, of worshiping here in the United States. And Lord God, I, I lift up our leaders in Washington. I lift up the president his at, um, and his um, advisors. I pray, Lord God, that you will become his chief advisor in the name of Jesus. I pray, Lord God, that you'll send apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers across his path to minister to him, to speak to him what thus saith the Lord in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord God, for those members of Congress who know you, who have made Jesus their Lord, who are filled with the Holy Spirit, that they will cry aloud and spare not. I pray, Lord God, that they'll not be in the minority, but they'll be in the majority in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord God, that they'll stand up and they'll not be afraid of the gospel, they'll not be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, nor afraid of opposition, Lord God, but they'll speak, Lord God, your word in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We pray, Lord God, for a turnaround in this nation. We pray, Father, for a turnaround um, concerning the, the violence um, that has erupted. And we break the power of every spirit of death and premature death over our children, over our young people in the name of Jesus. We take authority over every spirit of darkness that comes, and that comes to steal, kill, and destroy our seed in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We decree that our children will live and not die in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We come across, we come, I come against every devilish force and every devilish doctrine in our public school system, and we cast it out in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I pray, Father, that parents will wake up, Lord, and they, Lord God, will be involved in what is being spoken and taught in the school systems that's against your will and against your word. We just thank you, Father, for a turnaround, Lord, in the nation, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth for good. And I pray, Lord God, that we as a church will be part of that turnaround. As we go forth as ambassadors for Christ, I pray, Lord God, that we will not um, be hesitant, Lord God, about sharing and ministering to people out in the marketplace. Lord God, I lift up this service, and I thank you and praise you, Lord, that everything that's done here from beginning to end will glorify you in Jesus' name. We have come to lift you up. We pray, Lord God, that you will be seen, that you will be known, that that your people will be edified and ministered to. We thank you, Father, for the word that will go forth today. I thank you and praise you, Father, for Pastor Johnson and Dr. Woods. I pray, Lord God, that you will continue to bless them, Father, with divine health, Lord God, with uh, um, finances, Lord God, to meet every need and then some. In Jesus' name, I pray, Father, that the servants of God will be um, will walk, Lord God, um, in, in plenty, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We just thank you, Father, that the needs of this church are met, Lord, in Jesus' name. And we give you glory and honor, Father, for what you're going to do. We expect great things, Lord God. We expect the Spirit of God to move in this place and in us, in Jesus' name. Amen. I'd like to call our attention to Jeremiah 29, starting at, at verse 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. Then you will call upon me and come and pray to me, and I will hear you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all of your heart. I read for our consideration verses 11 through 13. May the Lord add a blessing to the hearer, the reader, and the doer of his word. Good morning, good people. There is a scripture that says, repay no man evil for evil. And if you want to find it, you can look it up in Romans 12, 17. And the reason that this is important is that evil happens to everyone. And you have a choice with how you will handle it when it comes your way. I'd like to read a poem for this occasion. It says, not everyone will have the heart you have. Not everyone 
will appreciate you and what you do for them. Sometimes it won't be easy having a kind heart in a cruel world. Be prepared. And so when Jesus told us to forgive others as he had forgiven us, that was to prepare us for the things that were to come. What is the first step toward forgiveness? Acknowledgement, acknowledging that you were hurt, acknowledging that what has happened has been something that is, is painful to you. A lot of things can pass by and not bother us, but there are some things that really, really hurt. How to avoid judging yourself when the who that needs to be forgiven is you. Because we do things even against ourselves. It's not always somebody else that hurts us. Amen. Sometimes our choices, sometimes the things we say or don't say make a difference. And if you're truly sorry for something you've said or done, consider admitting it to those you have harmed. Admit it to yourself. Admit it to the person that you have spoken against or said something to or not done something you promised you would do. Speak of your sincere sorrow or regret and ask for forgiveness without making excuses. I, I know I said that, but my stomach was hurting. <laughs> I, 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 I know uh, I didn't pay you uh, back, uh, but you know, it's been hard. Uh, the the uh, gas prices are up and the, my rent is high and the, the five dollars that you 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 loaned me well I I just kind of used it. <laughs> well, I was on vacation. Well, oh, while I was in va vacation in the Bahamas. <laughs> and when you when you're trying to reconcile with someone, what if that person? doesn't change? What if they remain angry with you? What if they remain regretful? What if they remain evil or stubborn or whatever you want to call it? You have to remember that it's up to you to forgive them. You can't make them forgive you. You can't make people change. All you can do is be the example of godliness that Christ has set. Getting another person to change his or her actions or behavior isn't the point of forgiveness. Think of forgiveness more about how it can change your life, keep you from being sick, keep you from being angry, keep you from losing your peace. When you forgive people, there's a peace that comes over you. Because as long as you hold on to the things that are harmful, the things that are evil, the things that make you angry, the more weighted down you feel. And the more control anger and unforgiveness has over you. You're not in control. You are not in control as long as you hold on to what somebody did or somebody said or somebody, what somebody didn't do or didn't say. Forgiveness can take away the power of the person to wield, employ, use, manipulate things in your life. So if you want power that God has given you, he said, you must forgive. Amen. What happens if you can't forgive someone? Because you may get stuck in a quagmire of unforgiveness, remembering what they did and didn't do. And what you will do is let it go because it'll bring bitterness and anger into every relationship and every new experience. You may become so wrapped up in the wrong that you can't enjoy the present. You may become depressed or anxious. You can feel that your life lacks meaning or purpose or what you're at odds with your, or that you're at odds with your spiritual beliefs. What happens if you can't forgive someone? 
put yourself in their place and see if I was that person, how would I feel if this was done to me? How would I feel if this was said to me? How would I react? Fellow citizens, would you please get with someone and share some testimony of forgiveness or issues where you need to talk to someone who is scripturally sound about forgiveness? Please do that now. We're going to hold to God's unchanging hand. Time is filled with swift transition. No. Trust in him who will not leave you whatsoever years may bring. Whatsoever years may bring. If by earthly friends, if by earthly friends forsaken, still more closely, still more closely to him cling. You better hold to his hand. God's unchanging.
Hallelujah. Might want to sing that to yourself every day. <laughs> Can't build on your money or the government or. Mm -mm. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Oh.
Lord. Good morning, saints. I'm going to give you the announcements, but I just wanted to take a little time and, and have a testimony real quick um, about addiction. I gave this testimony to the, uh, the forgiveness clinic about a week ago, and uh, I was into addiction very heavily. Um, I was addicted to alcohol, and I, it was so bad that I'd go in the liquor store and, and go get a a soda and come to the front thing and they would already have my drink sitting there. So it, it was ongoing. So I just would like to say that uh, as of this month, I'm 31 years alcohol free. So that is a blessing. And before I start these announcements, there is one other addiction I did have that I'd like to confess to the co uh, congregation right now. Um, I was addicted to the hokey pokey, but I turned myself around. <laughs> <laughs> Los Angeles Shabbat Foursquare Church Announcements. Hebrews 10.25 says, this is not the time to pull away and neglect meeting together, as some have formed the habit of doing. In fact, we should come together even more frequently. We invite all members and friends of the Los Angeles Shabbat Church to come together and participate in the following weekly phone conference meetings for 2022. Prayer, every Monday to Friday from 10 to 11. Stir, if you desire to learn more about the gifts and manifestations of the Holy Spirit and how to operate in those gifts, please join us for Stir. Stir is taught by Pastor Johnson every Monday from 3.30 to 5 p.m. Reading and homework assignments are mandatory. Please see Ernestine Etter for more information. Ernestine? <laughs> 
Tuesday forgiveness class from 11 a.m. to 12.30. Oh, and it's a good class, too. Um, Tuesday evening prayer from 6.30 to 7. Then we have men talk. That meets the first and second Tuesday of the month from 7 to 8 p.m. Men talk is for men only. Don't be trying to disguise your voices on there. <laughs> Ages 18 and up. <laughs> goal setting. Wednesday from 6 to 7 p.m. In goal setting, we come together to share long-term and short-term goals and receive encouragement and prayer to carry them out. Comforted is a, uh, uh, next is comforted. It is a support group for people who have lost a loved one. The loss can be recent or in the past. Comforted meets every other Thursday from 6 to 7. And the future meetings are October 20th, November 3rd, and 17th, and December 15th. And we invite you to visit our church website site at lasfc.org where all of this information, including phone numbers and access codes, are listed on the first page and under announcements. Now, in an effort to ensure the safety of those who assemble in the sanctuary, sanctuary we are asking for your cooperation with the following guidelines. If you have tested positive for COVID and are waiting on test results, please remain at home. And if you have symptoms such as fever, chills, cough, difficulty breathing, body aches, headache, or congestion, please remain at home and get tested and call us for some prayer. The N95 masks are now required to enter the sanctuary. You may bring your own, but cloth masks are no longer acceptable, no matter how fancy they look. You must keep your mask on during the entire service. Please do not touch, hug, or shake hands with anyone. Do not congregate in the aisles or anywhere inside the church after Sunday, after service rather. Please follow the ushers' directions and exit immediately. And we thank you for that. And I'd like to have a, a, say a, an announcement for uh, Rudolph, the forgiveness clinic. Amen. This is a play about getting free from anger and walking in forgiveness. And you will be blessed. We have worked really hard on this. And it's a labor of love for the Lord and for our constituents here. So the dates are going to be Saturday, November 5th, Saturday, November 12th, Saturday, December 3rd, and Saturday, December 10th at 2 p.m. All seats are free. All ages are welcome. Um, this is PG, uh, PG rated. <laughs> so <laughs> no X rated, no 16 years old or any of that. A free will offering will be um, taken. And due to limited seating, please register using the QR code, which is on a flyer. And if you need a flyer, I'm sure we can get you a flyer. And uh, we just like to thank you in advance for filling up the seats for this wonderful play that we're going to have in Jesus' name. Uh, birthdays. Oh, are there any birthdays out there today? I know your birthday here. We got you. We got you. Uh, any, any visitors? Other? And any visitors. Come on, visitors. The song we play for visitors, I love that song. That's my jam. You know? And uh, so please, somebody, just stand up anyway so we can play it. <laughs> I'm aware of something. I'm aware of how deception takes place. Do you know that there are some things that God wants to do for you and the enemy will cloak the av availability of God's blessings. Did you know that? Amen. And I have, uh, I'll give you an example. God sent prophets to talk to me. One said, not supposed to come back to work. This was when I was working for a school board teacher uh, because uh, you're supposed to start pastoring. And I thought that was su such a lovely sentiment. And I prayed for the person that gave me the prophecy. They're sitting right there. And uh, went on back to teaching my class, you know. But for the space of two years, I'd go places near and far, out of town, anyway. And people would stop me even on the street and say, God said you're supposed to pastor. And I really talked to God about these people 
that loved the Lord, you know, and had this problem. <laughs> now, I'm sincere. I said, well, why do they pick on me? Why do they say that to me? Why? What? And it took the space of two years before I could hear God telling me to, to pastor. And when, when he did, he ignited my soul. When he spoke to me personally, it was a confrontation that no one could deny. But I learned that the subtleties of the enemy are like that. You can be right in the midst of hearing from God and you just walk away, Amen. saying, bless the Lord, oh my soul. Mm -hmm. And he's trying to bless you, yeah. but you, you're not getting it. Mm -hmm. Now I want to say something. How many of you felt impressed that God sent you to Shabbat, Fort Square Church? All right. OK. If you felt that God led you here, then he had a purpose. Say purpose. Okay, he had something in his knowing that you didn't know Amen. about the why you're here. Amen. You know, parents, God, God is a godly parent. He watches over us. And his oversight has a lot to do with keeping us safe. It has a lot to do with, with us growing and being nurtured. It has to do with us having strong spiritual muscles in this climate that we're in, you know. And you've looked at children, I know, who weren't even school age and their little baby teeth were rotten. Mm -hmm. Just rotten as they could be. And you didn't think anything about the child. You thought something about the parent. What was it? Negligent, Negligent to do what? To feed them properly, to take them to the dentist, to have good oral care, oral hygiene, all of that. All right. So it is, God is, a, God is our Father, and he sends shepherds, and shepherds that are obedient watch over the sheep. Amen. They watch over what they eat, and they're concerned when they don't eat the spiritual food that will cause them to grow strong and to have victory over the demonic forces. Amen. Amen. And I've seen some deception in our midst. Like, I know deception because I told you I was deceived for two years. I was doing ministry. My pastor was training me. I was doing everything that he told me to do, and I was doing one-on-one. -on -one. But when it came time for more, I, I, I couldn't hear it. And I asked God why. And he told me, if a person doesn't have eardrums, it doesn't matter how long you scream or how loudly. It doesn't even matter. If a bomb drops, they don't hear it. They need to have a friend to take them out of harm's way. Okay. If a person is blind, and you say, okay, well, they, they're blind. Let me make real big letters, capital, you know, so they can read it. They don't have the equipment to read it. The Lord told me I didn't have the equipment to hear what he was saying through the prophetic. Because... There were some things that I was deceived about in the arena of faith that were standing in my way. I was given a work ethic as a child. It was modeled in the home. Order was modeled in the home. And when, my, when I was five, my aunt knocked on the door, and we weren't allowed to answer the door. When we were children coming up, you know, we, we couldn't answer the door. We were told, People that own the house are the only ones that answer the door. You don't let nobody in. If somebody belongs in this house, they have a key. Amen. See, but I could hear my aunt out there crying frantically. And I said, Mama, Auntie's outside. 
when Auntie came in, she only had her underwear on, and her husband, who was an alcoholic, had brutalized her, and she ran to our house. We lived in the projects, and she lived on the road behind us, my aunt and her children, and my mother and father and I and my two siblings, we lived on the front row. So we'd see each other all the time, and I'd play with my cousins because we were neighbors, so to speak, you know. And um, in his alcoholic rage and madness, you know, and she began to say, why didn't I finish school? What am I going to do? I can't take it anymore. And I heard this, and it indelibly impressed on my mind. You're going to get your education because you don't know what the next day holds. Amen. After about a bit in the fr frenzy, then my mother said, go upstairs, you know. <laughs> we weren't supposed to listen to adult conversations, right. you know. But something was planted in me. Mm -hmm. I have to do everything I can to be responsible for me and whoever I can bless. You understand what I'm saying? I could not hear after a divorce, I could not hear, quit this job. And pastor, pastor what? Pastor who? Who would listen to a woman? What, what the per I told the Lord I didn't believe in women pastors myself. He had to really work with me. But I was deceived about the will of God because I thought the will of God was my good intentions. I wasn't being mean or, or rebellious. I thought I was right. I thought I was right. Some of you have missed some treasures that God wants to put in your life because you don't know that where he sends you is the fountain that he's going to pour out. Amen. The food that you the blessings that you need, the tools that you need, the strength that you need, the stamina and the knowledge that you need. In the vernacular of the day, I might. I thought I was I. I'm ministering to people one-on-one. -on -one. I'm, I'm doing everything I know to do. I know to do. I know to do, I know to do. There's more. The day that you stop and push back the privilege of learning more is the day that you're deceived. That's right, God has more for you. There's a reason, why did we all wake up this morning? For what? It's not because of same old, same old. Amen. God has sent some food that it's better than the breakfast of champions. Amen. All you have to do is stay in your bed if you're in your bed and dial a phone number and be served. God has provided a prayer line. Oh, well. You need this prayer line. You need what God does on the prayer line. I'm not talking about people even praying. Because you can, anybody can pray. I'm talking about the Holy Ghost coming in there and meeting needs. You don't know what he's liable to do next. And we can walk along and think God ain't doing much of nothing. As we hear announcements about the food that can cause you to grow bigger. About the resolve to walk with Jesus today in the supernatural. Many Christians don't know that the supernatural realm is for us now, not after you go to heaven. Your eternal life, when did it begin? When you accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior. But there's not going to be a change when you're leading yourself. Because he's not Lord. You run it. Believe I'll eat a banana split for, for dinner. I said one day I'm going to write a, a story about a little boy and little girl that wanted jelly beans for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And that's what we want. We want 
But we don't even know that the word of God is sweeter than honey on the honeycomb. He said, oh, taste and see, you got to taste it. And these opportunities to meet with God are there. And most of this congregation is not eating. So God told me to talk to you about the food of champions. It's the word. Amen. About this prayer time. I, and I'm going to tell you why I'm talking about it. Because he comes. He comes on the prayer line. He comes on the, the uh, prophetic line. He comes on the night prayer line. I don't know. Nope. I don't know what he always something that exalts him and blesses us. Amen. Have you ever made an assumption and it's wrong? Yes. yes. That's what I'm talking to you about. Sometimes we assume. I'm not missing nothing. Or oh, what? Oh, I'm not. Then I'm going to tell you something else the flesh does. Who's on there? Who all, who all uh, is on there? Oh. oh, okay. Scratch it off. Unforgiveness. There's something in you. When, until you can get to the point where you're not saying, this person is my, not my cup of tea. Your enemy, he said he'd make it to be at peace with you. Many of us say, I don't see the manifestations of the word of God, and that's because you're deceived. You're to see, you don't know where to eat. You don't know about the cistern that drains everything and how to get rid of it and how to get into the, the well, the deep wells of the word. God is bringing such provision. Sister uh, Stephanie is coming right now. She's gonna give a little a short testimony about something God does that she sees it's an analysis of what she sees. And this provision is for you. This provision is for you. For, from the um, the nine, from the 10 o'clock, Monday through Friday, prayer line. God is so faithful. I was so happy when Sister Janelle said, I'm starting a prayer line. You don't know how blessed I was. And I Wait, stop right there. It's a blessing. But let me tell you about the curse. Anybody that has ever had a riff with Janelle, I'm, I, this is family, okay? Amen. Any kind of rift. Don't get on that line. In March, it'll be you three need years. To know. Three you need to years. know how the devil is moving. He's a deceiver. You are family. I'm family. We're family. Family has conflict because we haven't known how to shake it loose and walk in love yet. But you're here to learn in a nucleus how to walk in love. You got brothers and sisters that work on your nerves. And God wants to give you the love and the peace that passes understanding so you can work with people and also realize you ain't no prize yourself. Amen. We're going to get along. This is a no huckabug zone. Amen. God has got to teach you because you're not going to walk into the counsel of God in the heavenlies bringing your checkoff list about who you will and who you won't be with. Come on, family. Yes, ma'am. Truth. It sets us free. Eat the food God gives you. There is nobody on planet Earth that you're going to find that's going to be a perfect friend. Amen. They're not. You're not. That's why he shed the blood. Go on, Jesus. Yes, ma'am. Go on. Uh, two and a half years of blessings, 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 blessings. Two and a half years of sharing. Two and a half years of learning. Two and a half years of being transparent. Two and a half years of being there for each other. I've had people that said that I'm so lonely and I have nothing to do. I gave them the prayer line number. They don't call in and they're still talking about they're lonely. We need each other like Pastor said. We have learned to agree to disagree. We have learned to search the scriptures. We have learned to pray from everything from A to Z. Our children, the weather, the nuclear war that 
Putin is trying to bring upon us everything, and God has answered our prayer. He's delivered our children. He's kept our children safe. He saved me from an accident. Pastor Paulette was, uh, the same day that I had the accident, she said that on her, on her prayer line, she said the Lord told her to pray for someone that was getting ready to have an accident. And it was time for her to close. And she says, I've never prayed like that before. But she told everybody, we need to pray now. They were praying for me. Amen. The Lord saved my life because yes. of the prayer line. Yes. I mean, he was going to do it, but he put on her heart to pray for someone who was getting ready to be in an accident. We have learned to love each other. We have learned to share. We have learned to care. We have learned what communion means. We have learned just whatever. We do Psalms 91 every day. We do uh, Second Chronicles 714 every day. We give praise reports every day. We pray for each other every day. We pray in the spirit. Do you know when you pray in the spirit, Pastor has taught us we're praying the perfect prayer. Perfect. The prayer that cannot be slowed down, stopped, or hindered. The prayer that has nothing to do about what Stephanie thinks or anyone on the prayer line. We're saying exactly what God wants and it happens. We know it's happening. We see it happening. Amen. There's a difference. I'm so thankful. I'm so thankful. I'm so thank you for your obedience, Pastor uh, Janelle. Amen. I am so thankful. And then I want to add on. Pastor talked about our forgiveness clinic on Tuesday. Pastor talked about our uh, STIR class. We need all three of them. It's a puzzle. It's a big puzzle, and we need to be participating in everything so that puzzle can be complete. We need to know what God wants us to know. As we study the word, we know how to pray better. We need this information. Don't sit back and say, I can't do it. I don't have time. Make time. We make time for everything else. Oh, yeah. We do what we want so to do. So we need sure. to be on the prayer line. We need to be in the stir class. We need to be in the healing clinic. We need it. We need each other. You know what? The enemy conquers and divides. But as we come together in mm -hmm. love and unity, he can't, he, doesn't, he can't get a foothold. He can't stand because sister is going to say, Steph, something's off. Let me pray for you. Many times pastor has said, Stephanie, there's something you need to say. That's nothing but the Holy Spirit. And I say, okay, Father, what do you want me to say? And he gives it to me. And it's something that the group will say, oh, I needed that. That came from God. Amen. We need each other. Amen. We need, I can't overemphasize how much we need each other. And if we come together in prayer, unity, and love, it's going to happen. Amen. Thank you so much. Janelle, thank you so much, Pastor. Praise thank God. you for thank your teaching. Lord. Thank, thank you Lord. for getting on us. Thank you for correcting us. God. Janelle, thank you for correcting us. Thank you that when we pray and we might say something wrong, you say, where, where's that in the scripture? And Pastor does it too. Where's, where does that say that in the scripture? It takes us back to God. We, we did in um, uh, War on the Saints, we did counterfeits. He counterfeits. And we have to study the word, know the word, so that we won't be counterfeited. And I shared this, and I'm going to sit down. Uh, Martha Graham was in London, and she was at uh, a big gala, and she sat next to this man who was an expert at counterfeit. So she says, oh, you study counterfeit dollars all day long. She's, he says, no, I study the real thing. And that's what we're getting, Pastor, the real thing, Jesus Christ, Amen. the Father, the Holy Spirit, the real thing. We have to know him, his character. We have to know what he says in his word. We have to know so that we will not be counterfeited. Thank you, Pastor. Amen. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, sister, uh, <clears throat> Wilbur is going to... Uh, reflect, have a reflection about another offering. I want you all to, that can, to get on these lines. It's dangerous when you say, I don't need, or I know that already. It's dangerous. It's dangerous. The demons tell you, you learned that 20 years ago, 40 years ago. It's dangerous. Jesus is a revelation. He's constantly giving birth to nuances of himself so that you can live prosperously while you're here. Amen. And I believe um, Pastor Johnson started the um, goal setting class 
in 2020. And at that time, I was in the process of getting my, my book together through a, a, really a series of, of divine events that God set up. And the goal setting class was everything I needed. In the goal setting class, we, we come together, we share our goals, and your goal could be, people have had goals of losing weight, gaining weight, cleaning out your garage, order, um, organizing your closet, you know, saving money, um, just, just anything and everything. Uh, no goal is too small, no goal is too big. And it, but it was just what I needed at that time because I was entering into uncharted territory, something I knew nothing about. And the blessing was that people would encourage me to continue. Um, I, I became accountable to the group. And so I knew that, you know, I had to, I had the, the desire to begin and to end my goal and to finish my goal. And the encouragement in the group comes in such a loving way. No, nobody's criticized or ridiculed or, um, you know, because let's say you didn't do anything that week. It's okay. We just continue to come on the line and everybody encourages you and whatever your goal is. And then, and then somebody prays for you regarding that goal. And that prayer has made such a, an amazing difference in my life. And I just encourage you to just come and listen. You know, you may not have a goal. And I've, people have come on the goal setting line who haven't had a goal, but then they listen to other people's goals and then God sparks something in them. And it's so wonderful to begin your project and to end it. And what we say at the beginning is the start is what stops most people. Sometimes you don't know how to start. But God will give you the know-how. He'll give you the wisdom. He'll give you the strategy. And he'll show you how to start. And he'll bring people into your life who, who will help you and who will encourage you in the things that you don't know how to do. So I just want to encourage you to come to the goal setting line. It's every Wednesday from 6 to 7. And the wonderful thing is that you do not have to commit to every week because we're not taking role and we're not going to harass you or call you up and find out where you are, you know, unless God puts you on our heart. But it's a wonderful, wonderful class. You can come when you want. You have something to do that next Wednesday, you don't have to be on there. But all I'm saying is, is just, with all of these classes, just come and partake and see what it's like. Just dip, put your feet in the water, and God is going to um, meet you, meet you there. And God's going to bless you. He really is. It's such a blessing. All of these groups are Holy Spirit driven. They're Holy Spirit driven, and they are a blessing. Thank you. Um, Ernestine, would you say something about Stir? Can she have a mic? You wanted to reach back there where you were? Do you want to sit? Okay. Help yourself. <laughs> The STIR class is absolutely fabulous. It's wonderful because God wants the saints equipped to do the word of God. Uh, Pastor has taught us so much about the prophetic. And the word of God tells that, that we should covet the best gifts. And the speaking gifts are the best gifts. The gift of prophecy, the gift of tongues. People are going to mediums. They're going to soothsayers and all kinds of things. Why are they going? Because the mouth of the saints are sealed. Hmm. 
each of us has the ability to move in the prophetic. Not to say that you we learned about the office of the prophetic and just the move of the prophetic. So all God needs is a willing vessel. The, the, the path to becoming willing is to say yes to what's being offered here. There are people that are paying thousands of dollars to be taught what our pastor is giving us each and every Wednesday. And we won't come and receive of it. And if you won't come and receive for yourself, come and receive for others that need what you have. I, I, I didn't have a boldness before getting into this uh, class, but I wanted the things of God. I wanted to see, I wanted us to see, to do what he said we could do. I wanted to see the miracles. And so I began to seek after the best gift, and then pastor started this class. And then I had to do something. By faith, I had to, had to decide to open my mouth. So when I would say, you know, it's scary to say, I, I believe the Lord is saying, and open it and give that word to someone. But God has never failed. Every time I've been able to do it, every time I've been not able, because you're always able, every time I've been obedient to when I hear the voice of God to open my mouth and say it, that person who I'm ministering to has been so blessed by it. Saints, we have to stop. We have to open our mouth. You're not in this church where, God, where your pastor is teaching you on a daily basis where, whenever she can about the things of God and then we not take advantage of it. We have a world out there that's looking for what we have. Come, come and eat. That's all I have to say. Sister Gwen is going to tell us about the Tuesday. Tuesday at 6.30. In obedience to God, the Lord told me to have um, a prayer class at night. And he said, make it short and sweet for people's schedule. And he gave us a time of restraint. And I knew about intercession. Um, the reason I'm crying is because this morning at about 4, the Lord woke me up about this church. And he told me, he said that, he was not satisfied with us being on cruise control. Mm -hmm. That we were sitting in here on his gifts and we were disobedient. And the prayer line has been a blessing to so many. Most of them don't belong to this church. They're very thirsty and they don't get an opportunity in their church to do anything. They have pastors that say the only person that will prophesy in this church is me. They have pastors that say well, you cannot go to another church. And that we've been given a mandate. And the reason I'm so emotional is because the Lord told me to say this. Thank God I didn't plan it. I didn't talk to pastor. But on that prayer line, pastor saved the life of a woman. And she was reluctant to even call pastor back. I'm not gonna talk about details, that's not the point. God is striving and he's running after us. He is chasing us and we are running from him. Deceived. He is chasing you because if you have life, you're supposed to have an assignment and most of you have failed. I'm not saying this to be critical, I'm just saying on the prayer line in a half an hour, the report of the people that do not belong to our church, but they belong to the body of Christ is, there is so much order. And when I had to go out of town, Paula Manley, who has an assignment with her mother, could not maybe be with us physically, but she stepped up to help me lift my hands, Ernestine. Their comment was, all of y'all are so trained. Is that an accident? <laughs> so I'm just gonna tell you like the IS is. I know sometimes I get funny, et cetera, but I love music, but I love James Brown. I call him the best gospel singer in the world because every song he got, he said, good God. <laughs> but one of my favorite gospel songs is get up off of that thing. 
And he says, and dance. What's the dance? The dance is the rejoicing and breaks the delivering power of darkness. When you move your feet, it will break yokes and bring deliverance. Hallelujah. Daniel danced out of his underwear and his wife dismissed him and taunted him. And the Lord said, from her body, nothing else would ever come. And I'm just saying to you that 6.30 to 7 has saved the lives of people. That 6.30 to 7, even when I was out of the country, that I was impressed to be there, but God had people to hold my hands. Here's the word of the Lord to the Los Angeles Shabbat family. And it's not an accident that one of our former young people are here. God is coming for the gifts. He left us and gave us gifts, and he is back now. You want to know what time it is? This prayer line from 6.30 to 7 is just an act of obedience for me. And the enemy fought it because there were some words said about it. There were words said about me. You got to take over spirit, but maybe that's why you don't get on other people's prayer line. I mean, it wanted to come to this, to this, to, and someone called me and said, you know, I think this word was for you, Gwen. If you don't resist the devil, that's right. if you do not fight and don't know that if you are in this church and you don't have your hands in some kind of work in here, you're in rebellion. I am not the pastor of this church, but I will be obedient to God. Now you sit in your comfort zone while your pastors have been holding our hands up and they are in tiredness. They need our help. And we slide in here comfortable. God is shaking us right now, this minute. And there's a repentance that this house must do because you're not using the gifts he gave you. You're telling him that, you know what, I did that 20 years ago. I taught Sunday school, I don't need to do it anymore. Joyce doesn't need another voice up there to help her because, you know, I don't feel like doing it. You are not your own. And you cannot take it for an example. You cannot say to God when he's going to talk to you. Got teaching gifts, Brother, Brother Lewis, like never before. God's saying, he said, I have an audience for you. Find it. Counseling gifts here, Sister Jesse. I could call many of it. Because he talked to me all morning. He said, well, he's just talking to you. No, because he's talking to me to talk to you because he's talking to you and some of us are not listening. And the things that I just said, I'm not criticizing anyone, but I'm just telling you, God is wanting his people freed, delivered, saved. And you got it. And you're sitting on it. I have been privileged to go all around the world, and I'm going to tell you, there's no freedom in no other church that I've seen than here in this church that our pastor is encouraging us to step out. You have no idea how people are thirsty for a living God to want to be used by God and their pastors because of their own brokenness, their own control spirits, will not let them do nothing. So I adjure you by the living God. From 6.30 to 7, if you want to find Jesus, he says where two are gathered. On Wednesday night, if you want to find Jesus, to stir up the gifts. Timothy was told to, uh, a man told him, stir up the gifts because he knew that he was destined to die. And he said, I want legacy. I want legacy to continue. So he told him how to stir up the gift that was in him. Today, the Holy Spirit through me, through Ernestine, through Stephanie, through our pastor. See, this is the Holy Ghost. We didn't talk this morning. He's saying to you, you're sitting down on me and my gifts, and they don't belong to you. And if you have life, you have purpose in this church. Charity, love belongs in the house. Some of us are out there in the marketplace, that's good. But what are you doing for this church? Not only in the service, but in your giving. God is shaking you, and he's shaking this church. Please hear the word of the Lord today. Please hear this pastor who because she's a relational pastor, she's not hard on us. But she believes God as she looks at us slothfully coming in here, leaning on them, letting them carry the weight. This is not a pleasant word, but it's a necessary word. Starting with me. I told the Lord, I said, I repent for the I goners and what I'm gonna do. Provision is in the house and it's in you. People are dying and your mouth is shut. People need counseling and you talk about, you know, well, they can get it from somewhere else. Let Pastor Johnson call Pastor Johnson. She has been faithful to God, her and Dr. Woods, to pour into us 
lastly, I'll say someone said something to me today. She said, you know, you have the most unusual church that I've ever been to. This is another pastor. He says, I've never seen a church like yours. He says, because you are given implementation and strategies and wealth that other people are paying thousands of dollars for. Right now, downtown LA, Lisa Nichols is having a program and it costs $3,000 for three days to hear what she says. We get it for free. The virtual is $500. She's got a thing in Nassau, and, it, and they said, I, I was the first to sign up, I was so happy, until they told me how much it cost. Almost $10,000, do you know it sold out? And she is saying almost exactly what our pastor is saying. We need to, like never before, look at these empty seats. They got comfortable in the virtual. God is calling for all hands on back because of the call of God on her life where other pastors are resigning and walking away, pastor said, I'm getting more assignments. Is that true, pastor? Yeah, that's the word, that's true. That's we that. ain't 22 anymore, but I know this God. He said, your latter shall be greater your than your former. That's the word. Your latter shall be greater than your former. Your latter, your latter years. The apostles were 80 when they gave their most and they all died for it. God is saying, die to yourself today. Hear the prophet and live. I pray that you take this in love. I'm asking the Lord, Lord, I know I'm doing some. In some cases, I'm doing a lot. But what we have, people, do you know that every, even our children, they, all of them, have a call on their life like never before? They learned it here. Do you know that people are begging and going to soothsayers and paying money for what we can walk up and you can move in the Holy Ghost? You don't even think about it. God is saying, I'm coming for the gift. And here's the last part. You can resist him, but there'll be a payday. Hmm. Our pastor tells us every time that we have a boss, he wants you to lay down so he could stand up. That's right. There, that's right now, if you feel that you owe God more than what you're giving him, I want you to stand to your feet. I want you to look around anybody. If you say, I know I have not been giving him 100%. I know that I need to give my church more. And it's not about Shabbat, it's about the body of Christ needing the gift that's within you in the name of Jesus that I, re I repent and I'm stirring up the gift. And I'm asking God to reveal to me, illuminate to me the gift that has been hidden to me because of deception. That I will not give God my list of what I've done. But I want to be like he was on that Calvary's cross saying, it is finished. Father, we stand humbly. And you say, what good can come out of Shabbat? We have life-saving people that are standing on their feet. And those that are sitting, I know they're standing. I know Marie. He said, the books, the poetry, the scripts. He said, you keep looking at situations, and they're going to keep you down. He said, you're going to have to believe me like never before and press into it so you can give birth. And the enemy's trying to kill you. And he says, don't die. You receive that? We have the power of God in us, everything from the top of our heads to the bottom of our feet, Father, we consecrate to you right now. Stir up in us like never before, Father, the gifts and calling of God. They're mighty through deliverance. And he has not given you a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. I speak to every spirit of dementia and Alzheimer that would want to come on the saints to take the word of God out of them. That is, God said, you're going to teach, and you're going to teach like you never taught before. He said, get out of the way. Give him everything that he needs you to give him in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. The musicians right now, God said, stir up, stir up like people. never before. Hallelujah. And stop talking about and thinking about what they say. He said, you better be mindful of what they say. Hallelujah. He says, when you and your ways please me, he said, then I am responsible to bring you the peace. Yeah. So, Father, right now with hands lifted, we just say, we surrender. You're going to give us assignments, and you're talking to us right now. And we're not going to say no again. Well, I was an usher. Well, he'll give you strength to stand up when you've got a woman that's been standing for 40 years here in this aisle. Don't she need some help? Hallelujah. There are teaching gifts that are here that you're supposed to have Bible studies. Your pastor said from this pulpit, how many of you didn't do it? But God is saying that I love you. That's why I'm chastening right now. 
the pruning in your life in this season is to bring increase. You know, he's going to enlarge the tent of that Bible study. Be ready for it. Be ready for it. And this young man that just walked in, God's had you come here directly for today for you to get your marching orders in the kingdom. God's going to reveal it to you. And he's going to let Sister Janelle help you with it. Clarity. I speak right now. I come against the spirit of deafness and dumbness in the body of Christ here in Shabbat that we will hear God. Every counterfeiting, whispering spirit. I'm too busy, etc. He is your time manager. He says when you seek Lord, then all things will be given. So, Father, we thank you for the peace of God. We thank you that we right now, can, Janelle, can you stand over here and, and Patricia, stand over here, lift our pastor's hands. I'm not talking out of faith. I'm going to talk out of what God's going to tell me, see, and if I'm wrong, he'll correct me. She's tired, and she's tired of pulling on us, begging us. Lift her hands like in Moses. Right now, y'all stand with your pastor just if, as you're led. Father, we are here for assignment. We know that God is speaking to you about us. And you haven't lashed out at us. You haven't been critical to us. You just loved us, as you always have. Father, we just right now rededicate for why we're here. We rededicate that we will have a purpose in this church like never before. Them repeat after you. It's in your mouth, but it needs to be in theirs too. Let's declare, say, I choose to obey God. And I will stir up I each and every gift in me in the name of Jesus. And Lord, and Lord let, me let me be mindful of any hidden gift. That's being kept from me. I cancel the spirit of deception that has been in me. I thank you for increase. I thank you for assignment. And every good and perfect gift that comes from the Father of lights, I want in me. And I support my pastors so that they can be obedient and give a good report about me like never before. Now I speak to the spirit of lack in this house. I'm speaking it over us in any form or shape. God is the same yesterday, this day, and forever. And the spirit of infirmity has to go from this house in the name of Jesus. Go. The spirit of lack has to go from this house. Go. The spirit of bitterness which breeds unforgiveness has to go. Say go in the name of Jesus. We take authority over anything that is not light. And we will have a legacy in the seed from our bodies that they will serve God. It will fill these seats with your children. Pick them up off the streets if you have to. But God says, I'm putting this church on order. He's expecting greater things. And he's saying, Father, and like never before, there will be increase in this house. Praise God. There will be increase. Y'all say it over yourselves. I will speak increase I over yourselves. Increase. And the increase over of God is souls for the kingdom. Souls for the kingdom. Souls for the kingdom. Amen. And I just thank you, God, for letting me be obedient. Thank you, Lord. I just want to say one last thing. Do you know how much God loves you? Jesus loves you. This I know. You can cause the word of God that said and told me so. God so loved the world that he gave. Oh, it is Jesus. It is Jesus. And I just thank you. And understand that when you in obedience step out, you will have opposition. You need to know that that's not making you fear. It's reality. If you're doing something for God and there's no resistance, it may not have come from him. But the devil is armed, dangerous, but he's defeated. Yes, yes. And greater things will you do. 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 I keep saying it. Greater things will you do. God says, I just want to find somebody that I can show out in. Will it be you? Sister Joan, like never before, he's going to take you through the nations. 
Keep your bag packed and your passport tight. The gifts that we have in this body, there are books here that people have not written. I'm one of them. I repent publicly. We keep talking about money. He said, it's in your gifts. Get up off of that thing. Serve God and you'll feel better. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Family, uh, you heard talk about gifts. Each one of you have gifts. We come to learn so those gifts can be developed. You know, somebody can have a gift from God to play the piano. That doesn't mean they don't take piano lessons, even though they have that natural gift, you know. Amen. Everything that God wants to develop spiritually so that he can use you, we, we want to teach. We want to teach. We want to teach you to open up to go for where you are further in God. That, that's, that's my assignment. The Bible says that the pastors are to equip the saints for the work of the ministry. You're here to be equipped to work for the ministry, not I went to church and I went home. Your life is supposed to be different now, okay? You're, you're a tool for the Lord now. And we've been plotting our way and doing our thing too long. We need to find out what God's thing is for us. Okay. The Bible says like, like people, like priests. How do I know? Because I was deceived. I had no idea there was a greater call. And there's a greater call on each of us. But we need mentors. Okay. Praise God. I'd just like to say that um, Friday night I had a dream about the church. And I didn't really realize what God was talking about. Mm -hmm. But he used uh, Pastor Gwen today. The, the dream was this church, and it just flashed before my eyes. And I didn't hear the Lord say anything, but I saw half the church filled up, and the other half was on the process of being filled up. And when I woke up, I wondered, I just wondered to myself, I wonder how you're gonna do that. Well, this morning in prayer with us in the back, back room, my prayer was that, Lord, you show us with signs and wonders today. And I want you to know that we've had signs and wonders today. And I just thank God for Gwen being obedient, obedient to what God is telling her to do. And we shall grow. Yes. We shall be the church of the living God. Each one of us shall be what God has called us to do. Purpose. We're going to stir up the gifts that's within us. Amen. And we're going to not look at our age, but we're going to keep on running. Amen. We're going to keep on running until God calls us home. Praise God. Sister Roger says we're not going to look at our age. You know, someone told me the other day that they uh, that they uh, had observed, you know, the seniors twerking. <laughs> I just, I just want to say, you know. I'm gonna put a sign up that says this is no huckabuck zone. And 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 you can twerk for Jesus. Okay, he he he'll show you how the body moves. Amen. He'll show you some body moves. Some body moves to get the to get the work of the gospel done. You are saved to be ambassadors. Not to just say I'm saved. It's not enough. He did that. The salvation part. But he's going to ask you, what would you do with my gifts? Amen. Isn't that pitiful if you're going to stand before him? And all of us are going to stand before him and say, gifts? What, what gifts? That's what you're supposed to learn. You're supposed to learn what your gifts are. You're supposed to find out in church. And these classes are to help you, to refine you. Okay? Amen. You're not supposed to be average Christian. You're supposed to be supernatural, walking in the gifts of the Spirit. God first has to teach you how to hear his voice. In January, Dr. Woods and I are going to start some classes, um, formal classes. And these classes, I'm going to announce the date as soon as I figure out how, how to do it. It'll be forthcoming. But 
I want church enrollment, not some enrollment. Church enrollment, ministry assignment to teach you how to hear from God. Or I hear from God, sharpen then. Sharpen your ear, okay, in the spirit realm. 